Lord forgive me for this trap shit Sergeant Smack make it backflip Telly hanged it with the action With the vato speaking Spanish Frank Matthews how I vanish Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut Go BBS is on a beamer When Fat Cat was tearing queens up Fall off the profit not the re Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus Uptown like I'm Baby Mane Just caught a touchdown From the Bay it's amazing how we're still standing. That's why it's a testimony yeah. to the hand of God That's being right. on me. Sometimes it comes across like I'm trying to be cocky and I'm not. I'm very confident in the God who I serve. He's brought me through That's right. so much with, That's right. with death threats, with all of the things that people try to bring to me to make me not do what it is that God called me to do. And I have no fear. I've seen everything. First of all, I wouldn't say that this is a hasty decision or the decision that I made was something that just came about out of frustration. You know, I told everyone before I started that I don't plan to be here for long. I plan to, you know, use rap as a stepping stone. And I just wish people pay more attention to what I say than it wouldn't hit them as a surprise. And the real reason why I, why I decided to start rapping, I just wanted to better my life. I wanted to do something better for my life. Not all the time, money is the best thing for your life. Like, I look at a lot of people that's rich and I've seen a lot of women that's rich and I'm yet to really see a happy rich person like deep down in their heart really happy and I feel as though I was happier when I wasn't doing music like not to even consider myself a Jordan or a Gretzky but those was two people that walked away from what they was doing when they was at their best and they walked away from the money. Jordan could have came back and got 50 million. Gretzky could have came back and got 30 million. I'm quite sure I could get a lot of money to come back. But it take a great person to walk away from money. Like you look at rappers until I came out and sold all them records. Rappers never believed they could sell that many records. I grew up in the hood. If you win gold, you was the man. So now you got rappers selling all type of millions. But who set the tone? Maze. You understand what I mean? Like, and I'm not looking for credit. I just do my job. And I do whatever I do with my whole heart. But when my heart is not in it, I can't do it, because that's how real I am. The thing is this. I never dismiss. He's part of my stories, mm -hmm. childhood stories growing up. Um, on the program, I did the intro. It's kind of a touchy situation. If you're from Harlem, you know the story very, very, very well. And I talked about the story. I'm cool with uh, the families of some of the people that passed away in the story that I'm talking about. Right. One of the pe people that I talked about passed away. I'm um, cool with his mother. You know what I'm saying? And his mom was just really upset, like, her son died, she never even met Mace. Uh, that Lodi? L L Bob Lodi. Bob Lodi, yeah. Yeah, I'm not gonna really get into it, because when I talked to her, she was she was crying and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Like, you know, this dude never even came and said sorry to me, so I was like, I don't want to stir up any other emotions, especially with a mother who's grieving their son who's been dead for over 10 years. Mm -hmm. I wasn't giving y'all money. you on the line, Bethel? Yeah, that's me on the line. Yeah, that's me on the line. Where, you, you already know why you left Harlem. R.I.P. Baby Megan and R.I.P. Pop Lottie. That's why you left Harlem. You ran up out of there, Bethel. I'm Where moving from Harlem before that? that. Did you have a congregation in Atlanta? Did you leave your congregation there, man? Or did no, you die? No, Which one, sir. Bethel? Because you're saying that this is me. I don't care what you say, Marie, but this is me. I know you. I know don't, you too, don't, sir. Don't play with me, brother. Ain't nothing changed. You know, I put you in my goofy category. Off with your goofy. Don't play with me, man. Ain't nothing changed. God forgive you. What, what happened with Tell people what happened with Lottie. Did Lottie escort you out of Harlem before? 
Who's lo- all right, I need to find out her. Who's who's wow. these who are these people that were who are these he made a pop lottery? Ask him about that, Miss Jones. Ask him why. Who are home. they, Mace? They actually, they actually, they actually, two guys that passed away because Where of foolishness. Listen, all our they head. got killed over jewelry. What? Yeah, and not, they, not actually over yeah, jewelry. What happened to the belly? Didn't they have some money on got, back in the day about some, about some chains and? Don't play, man. You Who know what? Money on me. Goon squad. Don't play goon. Who's the And I want to, I'm happy you brought that up so we can dive into everything else. So, um, 15 years old, we're at the Gauchos gym. Um, huh? Bronx. In the BX, yeah, you play the Gauchos, huh? Yeah. He loved it. He loved the opportunity to say that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, yo, look, Flip. So, we in Gauchos gym. I'm a shorty. You know, I think Mace got a game. I think Mace got a game there or something. I mean, oh, he's coaching somebody or some type of team, whatever it was. Um, so we're in the gym. Everybody's kind of scattered out, and um, the guy Trail, she she mentioned, rest in peace to Trail, because he passed away. The, the guy who supposedly called her, whatever. I remember seeing Trail there that day. Um, so we're in the gym. Um, I think it's like halftime or something. We walk to the locker room. I'm walking to the locker room. I'm kind of behind everybody, and um, that's my chain. <laughs> Can't take it off me. He snatched my chain. Just got out and, you know, just walked away. Um, but, you know, I know who this guy is. Thinking thinking back and looking at the time, I'm like, this, you know, these, like she said, bro, these niggas is killers, these, these, these thorough, they not, they not with the sh- they, they, they'll, they will kill you. Just to put it into great perspective for whoever's listening. You know what I'm saying? These this ain't, this ain't no punk robbery type shit. You know what I'm saying? These niggas will smoke you. It wasn't for me though. I had no beef with the guy. I was a teenager. I didn't know the guy really. I knew of him, but it wasn't for me. It was to get Mace's attention. You get what I'm saying? So that happened. Um, Mace, for some reason. I got this problem with these niggas on the other side of town. And my little homie Pop Lottie, he's a rider now. NYC, we back. Harlem, what up though? We talking about a legend. Y'all get downstairs and stamp that comment box. Y'all meet us at 3333 Broadway. We on our way to Riverside Park Apartments. Now, today we talking about a legend and the alleged muscle of a one-time popular Harlem rapper that will find himself in a feud with one of the most notorious getting money niggas to come out of Harlem that will result in the death of six people. Now, the person that we talking about today is going to be none other than Pop Lottie or Papa, or City Blocks, depending on how you know him. Now, I'm going to say that probably most of the people outside of Harlem that know of the name or heard of Pop Lottie would be in large part due to a situation that would erupt in New York City in the late 1990s. It would be right around that time when Mace, Bad Boy's flagship artist and one of the top artists in the game at this time would befriend a well-known drug dealer from his neighborhood by the name of Baby J. A lot of us know him as Baby Maine. And in a lot of the interviews that I looked at for research, it was said that the two had a really good relationship. People would talk about stories about how Baby Maine would bring Mace back to his home, Lincoln Projects. And this is where it kind of gets tricky because nobody really speaks directly on a situation. In the article speaking on Baby Maine's life, somebody would say that it was alleged that Mace was seen leaving the apartment of Baby Maine's mother, a female that I guess both of them had known. I've even seen somewhere where they said Mace had dated her previously. i seen Miss T speak on a situation where it was something involving Baby Maine's baby mother. They didn't really get into detail with the situation, but... Now, if it's the top three things that niggas are going to get into beef over, I'm going to say it's going to be money, drugs, and family. And baby mama falls right under the umbrella of family, if you ask me. And that situation would pretty much shake Harlem for the next few years. It would escalate with a series of events. Now, we're not quite sure on dates when the fallout would occur 
over Baby Maine's baby mother. But during June of 1996 and May of 1997, Mace would go on to record the Harlem World album that would be released on October 28, 1997. And on that album, Mace would have a song titled Jealous Guys, almost in the ode of a song Notorious B.I.G. had released previously titled Player Hater, as Bad Boy pretty much like had their albums tailored. It was almost made the same, especially Mace compared to Biggie's. He had like a story to tell. But Jealous Guys was a playful kind of singy song. Wasn't really a rap song, or I wouldn't consider it a rap song. I remember Puffy being featured on it. And pretty much the song was exactly what the title says. Over a soulful beat, Mace would pretty much tease and antagonize guys that was jealous over girls. And it would come out somehow that this song has something to do with Baby Maine. Some people would go directly to a line in the song where Mace would say something like, you said she was your old girl. And you know how these situations are. During the course of my research, I even read where supposedly it was some kind of conversation where allegedly Baby Maine gave Mace the okay to mess with this girl. But I don't know how much I believe none of that shit. And supposedly upset about the situation already, I'm sure the release of that Jealous Guy song would escalate the beef even further. And based on interviews, this is where Pop Lottie would enter the situation. Now, I'm not sure of his relationship with Mace prior to this beef, but a lot of people would allege that Mace was fully aware of past issues that Pop Lottie had with Baby Maine, specifically a situation where Pop Lottie would end up being cut in the face by Maine, allegedly. I saw where some people said it was allegedly over a debt that Pop Lottie had owed to a friend of Baby Maine's. Now, trying to get as much information as I could on Pop Lottie, I reached out to several people that looked like they were close to him and they was really hesitant to speak. And I could see why, because a lot of these deaths are still unsolved. But what someone did say to me was Pop Lottie was about that action. And on top of that, his whole family is about that action. Now, this leads us to April of 1999, when Mace would go on to announce his retirement from hip hop. It would be at that time where he would head down to Atlanta and start the Oracle Church. But Miss T would state in a Queens Flip interview that at that same time, he would take Pop Lottie down to Atlanta. And she would go on to say that she wasn't sure if Mace had paid them. But when Pop Lottie returned back to Harlem, he had a chip on his shoulder and that beef was escalated even more. She would speak about a situation in February of 1999 where Pop Lottie would end up shooting Baby Maine five times. And from that point, according to her, it would be just wild shootings across Harlem. And it's sad because as a result, not only did Baby Maine and Pop Lottie lose their lives, but four other people also lost their lives. In an interview, she said it was really over nothing. And also people would say that Mace escalated it. And I kind of understand where they're coming from because you can kind of antagonize the situation a little more. But when somebody kind of cuts you, especially on the face, a lot of times I'm going to say most people, that's going to be a for life beef situation. And based on who I talked to about Pop Lottie, oh, that shit wasn't going to die down just over that. Now, in one of the most infamous situations that would go on in Harlem and go unspoken about for years, I just try to do my part to put a face to these names that we're hearing about. So really, I want to say R.I.P. to Baby J, R.I.P. to Pop Lottie, everybody else that lost their life in this situation. Now, if it's anybody familiar with 3333 Broadway, y'all get in the comment box. Anybody from Riverside Park Apartments familiar with the area, y'all get in the comment box, rep your section. Y'all make sure y'all hit the red bell and subscribe button right under this video so y'all know when it's real trill spill shit is dropping. Y'all get in the comment box, run it up, 
Let me know what cities I need to head to, what stories I need to tell, what gangsters I miss, what I got wrong, all of that. Tap in directly. Instagram, Twitter, P-O-P underscore A-L-O-T. And until next time, I know the rundown. Salute the almighty mob.